Web agencies are essential to making the digital world accessible, but they're trying to work through ADA compliance and accessibility just like everyone else. And whereas a website owner is only needs to be concerned with their websites, a, an agency needs to be concerned with any number of things, including all of their client websites, how they're going to approach accessibility, what their messaging needs to be to current clients and prospective clients, and then also updating their contract language amongst other things. So for that reason, I've basically, I've created a framework for um, agencies to work from. And that framework is my new course, the ADA website compliance for web agencies. And what I'm going to go over now are the highlights of this course. But even if you don't take the course, this PowerPoint presentation will help you um, start to think about the things you need to think about when it comes to ADA compliance and accessibility for your agency. And by the way, this is going to apply whether you're an agency or you are creating apps or plugins or any other types of digital products and services. And so we'll move on to the next slide. And this is the objective slide. So with the course, there are three primary objectives. Um, one is I want your agency to be able to discuss and educate clients intelligently on ADA compliance, the legal landscape, all of the lawsuits that are happening, and then also accessibility and the web content accessibility guidelines. I also want your agency to limit liability wherever possible. And then we want to use this as an opportunity to increase revenue because while I know it, it requires more work and now there is something additional that you have to think about that you weren't thinking about previously, that there is true opportunity for a windfall and for you to really have a first mover advantage in your niche. And then so we'll move on to the next slide. And now let's talk about most of the topics that the course covers, uh, the law and the legal landscape, accessibility and WCAG, the marketplace. So it's really important that you know what your clients are up against, especially if you are telling your clients, hey, look, we're not an accessibility agency. You need to go and find someone to audit and remediate your website. You need to know what your clients are up against, especially because this will ultimately come back to you as a provider of some sort. So let's say that you are maintaining their website you'll likely have to deal with this accessibility service provider. So it's important in more ways than one. Also, we'll cover preventing litigation. We'll cover your agency's liability, um, your messaging to clients, how you're going to approach this, especially given that traditionally you haven't been working on accessibility. Now clients are coming to you and demanding accessibility. How do you message this? What email do you send out to clients? Um, what is your approach going to be? So how are you going to deal with this? Is this something that you're going to offer? Are you going to tell clients, hey, just look for someone else, um, uh, look for an accessibility provider, this is not what we do. Are you going to uh, have a hybrid approach? So we'll talk about your approach. And then we'll also talk about updating your contract language to have a section on accessibility. And then one, one of the key features of the course is the client email. So this is this is actually really uh, a really a, a momentous. It's a, it's a, it's an important moment because you need to you need to email your clients. You need to inform them of the risk of being sued. Uh, you need to explain what the situation is. You need to explain what efforts you are taking to help them. You need to provide resources potentially offer services or at least direct them to where they can procure services and then urge clients to take action. So this is a really, really important email that you want to get right because you have to frame this so clients understand accessibility is still a relatively new consideration. It is now just now coming to the forefront and you want to make sure that you are helping, they know that you are helping them, you are educating them, but this is something that is outside of the scope of services that they bargained for. So it's really important that you frame this the right way. And in the course, there's a lesson dedicated to a client email, and they also provide you a template that you can customize and work from. But I think the real value in these templates is you can see, okay, what has someone else who knows this field inside and out what have they decided that a template should be? 
and by the way, I'm also an attorney, but when you when we go over this template, it really gives you all of these different things that you want to have in mind. And then you can take this template and decide where you want to add some custom language. So it gives you an excellent starting point and it will literally save you hours. And then we'll also talk about your approach. So what are you going to do? Are you going to avoid this altogether? You don't want anything to do with accessibility. You know, this is a highly litigious environment. Uh, do you want to embrace this fully? It's like, look, we know accessibility is coming to us. We know that clients are demanding this. We need to, we need to embrace this fully. We need to bring on accessibility experts. We need to train our own team. Um, or are you going to take a hybrid approach? So let's be proactive but let's source out the expertise and experience because this is something we just don't have yet. And this is a, a whole separate endeavor. So let's seek out experts that can help us with this. So um, I'll, I'll help talk you through your approach and all of the different things you'll want to consider. And then another key component of the course is the contract language. So I provide another template with contract language and that this, I provide a section where you have an accessibility clause and in theory, it could be copy and pasted, but you wouldn't want to do that because you want to consult with an attorney um, because your situation is specific, right? Let's just say um, you're in your own industry, you're working from um, the the way, the, the norms that you've had with your clients in the past, your previous contract language, you've got to update that. There may be tie-ins to other sections, et cetera, but you, what you will have are the key considerations to keep uh, keep in mind what to think about as you're crafting your contract language. And then your attorney has a building block because your attorney isn't going to be familiar with this space. I am. So the, the, the good part is you already have, again, this, this sample language from someone who has experience. Now you can take this, this language and know, get the idea of what I was thinking and start to work from that and customize your own contract language. And then so the, the the really the last material slide here is you need to take a proactive stance with this. It's better to address this sooner rather than later, uh, because by waiting, you're, you're really setting yourself behind. The more you wait, the worse off you are, um, the worse you look. So by being proactive, you're setting the tone for your agency. Like we're on top of this. Um, this has come to our attention. We have researched it. After we have researched, this is what we have found. And now you can educate and you can help your clients rather than just being passive. If, you, if you're passive about this, then ultimately your client will get sued. They will come back to you. There will be complaints. You might lose the client. You might lose future clients, negative reviews, and so on. So there are compounding effects either way you go. But the longer you wait, the more negative consequences you can incur. So it's best just to start ASAP. And the best way to start is by educating yourself so that you in turn can inform clients and then everybody can be on the same page. Um, also, you will be able to improve accessibility uh, when you are making your website accessible, when you are helping your clients with accessibility, everyone stands to gain. Accessibility not only um, is necessary to make your digital assets accessible to people with disabilities. It also improves user experience overall. And as you learn more about the web content accessibility guidelines, you will start to realize, okay, yes, this really does help user experience and this has improved um, the usability of our website. So um, this, everyone stands to gain from accessibility. So that is another benefit to that. And then also you stand to make more money because you have the um, advantage of knowing about this ahead of time. You can have first mover advantage. You can talk about it intelligently intelligently on your website and you can when you talk about this intelligently and when you address accessibility fully and you have a, a page dedicated to accessibility beyond just your accessibility statement clients prospective clients are going to pick up on that and they are going to gravitate towards you and this does it may not be because you are all that special but it may be because you're the only one that's actually addressing that and that is going to be really attractive to clients more and more people are concerned with ADA compliance. And so when you are on top of this, you stand to gain. So last, I will leave you with two links um, and they are adacompliance.net and um, the URL to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at ADA book. Um, I will include links and more information in the description. But the important part here is your agency 
um, or you as a website builder, a theme builder, um, someone who offers plugins, applications, software, etc. You need to decide what your approach is going to be, and you need to be proactive in this approach. In um, during this brief presentation, I've covered many of the different things, the primary things that you need to be thinking about as you work towards uh, making offering accessibility services, offering accessible products. Um, you, this, is, this is what you need to be thinking about moving forward. So if you have any questions, definitely leave me a comment in the YouTube description, in, in the YouTube, um, in the, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Um, and if you need anything from me, I will include, I will include more information in the description.